Sunday, we could have used the viewing room. I'm afraid this is never easy. Well, we better get on with it then. Can you identify this person? Yes, it's Nicole Davidson. Substantial overdose, I'd say. No great volume, judging by the syringe that the police found, but too pure for someone who hasn't been using recently. How do you know she hasn't been using? Well, the needle scars are at least two months old. Except there's one new one here, on the arm. Ascoltami, Paolo. Siamo riusciti ad ottenere da Panama i tabulati delle transizioni bancarie di Sabatino. Ce n'è a sufficienza per un mandato di cattura. No, non posso ancora rientrare. La situazione qui è veramente esplosiva. Ti mando copie del fascicolo. Merita un attento esame, Paolo. Ok, mandalo pure, all'indirizzo che sono. D'accordo. Ti fammi sapere cosa ne pensi. Ho l'impressione che ci sia un Australian connection. Ok, Paul PT in. A presto, ciao. But get rid of that clown outside first. Understood. Either I get some cooperation out of you, Chief Inspector, or I go so far over your head that by the time your superiors are finished, you'll be lucky if you're still a detective. What are you going to tell them? That we already had to haul your ass out of the shit three times? Trespassing, obstructing traffic, and now compromising an undercover police operation. If my ass ends up in the can, it'll be because I didn't chuck you out in the first place. What I'll be telling them is that none of this would have been necessary if you'd agreed to an operation against IF in the first place. We had an operation against IF until you and that tart from the Observer blew it. Then why didn't you tell me? This is none of your bloody business. None of my business. 
My son has disappeared from an organization heavily involved in money laundering. Gianfranco Sabatino is sitting up at the Regal Hotel, working on protecting his Australian connection. And all you can say is, it's none of my business. Who is it? Stupidity or incompetence? What Australian connection? My people have come up with something new. Bullshit. They're sending me details. When? Soon. How? Yeah. Only if you help me. Nice try, Mr. Peasy, but no dice. The disciplinary committee of the Superior Magisterial Council would appreciate your assistance in expediting the urgent return of Judge Paolo Peasy as soon as possible. Giuseppe Caruso. Caruso? He doesn't mean anything. Sylvester got him the job. And that will be revoked as soon as I get to a phone. The next phone you get to will be in Rome. I'm happy for you to slip out of the country quietly, under escort. And if I refuse to go? You'll be deported. On what grounds? Mr. Peasy, let me put a hypothetical situation to you. A judge from a country notorious for its involvement in organised crime arrives in Australia a few days before a crime boss from the same country. Using his police contacts, the judge makes inquiries about a certain organisation over apparently some personal matter. Has a series of furtive meetings, makes a few cryptic phone calls. Caught breaking into the offices of the organisation, he slips away from his police bodyguard to meet a journalist. The next day, the journalist publishes a story completely compromising a secret police operation. And the police informant in that organisation is found dead. I'm no Perry Mason, Mr. Beasy. But I reckon if I had to, I could make a pretty good case that this judge came to Australia to sabotage the operation and protect his own corrupt links with the crime boss. So much for British justice. This is Australia. The plane moves in two hands. Got the room key? Do you believe what Hannibal said about me? I'd say he just wants to get you out of the country. Why didn't you tell me drug force had an operation against IF? I didn't know. You're hunting for a second legal man. We work on a need to know basis, the same as you do. He didn't even tell you I had an informer. If he had, you'd be the first to know. Who was it? I don't know. Did he tell you about the tap on my phone? No. Doesn't tell you too much, does he? Certainly not as much as you tell him. One thing he did tell me. What? Who it was who authorised your recall to Italy. Who? Judge Luca Silvestri. Jesus, wet. <laughs> A bit more than just complying with the request from Rome, wouldn't you say? What were they looking for? Why don't you ask your boss? Honey, for explaining some other game. Ah, oh, bullshit. He spent too much time in the cot with that journalist. Then why is he so keen to get me out of the country? Because you're running around like an unguided missile. You're, you're stuffing up a police operation. What police operation? Do you know who Lucas Silvestro is? Yes, he's the chairman of your disciplinary panel. And my protector. A few days before Jean died, he and I were talking about Judge Bordano. Silvestri told me Bordano made a big mistake. He angered powerful men before he could control them. So he was cut loose, left without any support. And then the inevitable happened. That's what Silvestri is doing to me. How can you be sure? I don't feel like taking this sort of chance. But I think I'm not going to see Robbie again. What would you do if you stayed here? All I want.
want to do is just to find Robbie. Is that all? That's all. Uh, I gotta take the weight off my ankles, huh? See in a tick. I told you he's not here. Afternoon. So what's happened to him? Don't you know? I'm not in the mood for games. Mind if I look round? Well, you're the one with the search warrant. You're right. He's not here. Strictly off the record, he's pissed off from his hotel. And we're within a bee's dick of slapping a deportation order on him. So, if you do happen to come across him, my home number's probably the best. For a man who went to all the trouble of getting a search warrant, he didn't do too much searching. Oh, they know where he is. So why pretend to search? An alibi? Okay, you are being paranoid. Why? Someone got Nicole, and suddenly Paolo's disappeared. I mean, who's next? Nicole OD'd. Junkies who know too much get OD'd. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Nicole. She looked so dead. Have you ever seen a dead person? Mm-hmm. The nuns at school. We had to file past them while they lay in chapel. <laughs> it's my fault she's dead. No one made her go back. Yes, we did. What if she was murdered? What are you going to do about it? Get whoever did it. How? Find out what I ever hiding. Do you want me to get it? No, no. No, I'm OK. Hello? Australia Post. Got a letter, Graham, for a clear boy. Hey, what do you think? Hey, hang on, Buster. It's all right. It's okay, we're together. Just drive around for a while. No. 
Uh, are you okay? Yeah. Well, and Nicole's dead. What? She overdosed with Youngman. Police are saying it's suicide, but I don't buy it. Why not? She was scared for her life, not trying to end it. And the injection that killed her was in the arm. Sabatino. What? The Australian connection. Sabatino has links with IF. Your article panics them. They found out Youngman is a police informer. So Sabatino has him killed. Youngman is a police informer. Drug Force was running an operation against IF, according to Hannaford. He says he had an informer in there. Claims your article got him killed. He must have been Youngman. But if Sabatino's killing, that means he's running scared. A running scared, you make mistakes. It's starting to fall apart. This is a real breakthrough. Breakthrough? Paolo, we sent Nicole back to be killed. Did we? Or was it just a matter of time? Oh, Jesus Christ! You're completely wiping your hands with this, aren't you? Keep your voice down. No, I will not keep my voice down. She's dead, Paolo. She is dead. Do you understand me? You, you just... You just don't give a stuff to you. No wonder your son doesn't want to see you, bastard! You stop the car! Just keep driving! No, you stop the car, please! Sorry. It may be an everyday occurrence for you, but I'm not used to seeing people who help me lying dead in the morgue. Don't blame yourself. She trusted me. You were not to know he would turn out like this. Wasn't I? <laughs> I don't know. Nicole's dead. Robbie's missing. You're on the run. You are a difficult man to be with. So what are you going to do now? I can't go to Wangabi. I thought you might know somewhere safe. Scomparso il dottor Pizzi. This. We haven't done anything. Is your name Leonardo Pizzi? Jack, it's eight trucks in two days and they're all Calabrians. This has got to be harassment, mate. It's drug force, Lenny. It's out of my hands, mate. Is your name Leonardo Pizzi? You know it is, you prick. These men are police officers authorised to search you and this vehicle on suspicion of possession of narcotics. So I advise you to keep your fat Calabrian mouth shut. Oh, <laughs> 
Try and be more careful. It wasn't my fault. Jesse gave me a fright. Can you clean that up? Come on, Katie. We're going to be late. And Mrs. Tynan picks the children up after school. She'll be back here at four. But Wayne's on night shift, so he'll be up before then. Don't let him talk you into a beer for afternoon tea. Where does he work? He's a foreman for Samson Publishing. Well, you've got to give me any sort of harness. Oh, I know, darling. We've run out. I've got some today. Come here. He's in pre-press where I started up. Ah, an office romance. <laughs> About a hundred years and three children ago. Mama finished your toothpaste. Okay, you boys do not have to clean your teeth. Yay! 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 Thank you for letting me stay here. <laughs> you may live to regret it. Nothing there, this time. But you tell your dope-growing mafia friends, this is just for starters. We're here to put them out of business. Capito? You haven't heard the end of this. Your truck's got a bald tire and a missing tail light. Get a toad back. Gene Shaw's husband and the gangster he's chasing, both in the country at the same time, and you don't tell me? What, have you suddenly developed an aversion to the front page or something? I had a deal. I agreed to wait until he found his son. You let that stop you? I told you the story would build just to trust me. Trust me. Yeah, that's what my first wife said. This was the story of a lifetime, and you just blown it. It still is. It'll be in every paper in the country tomorrow. Only if you tell them I got it to myself. What about the cops? They won't say anything. They'd have a bungled investigation, a dead informer, attempted frame-up of an Italian judge to explain. Minimum, they're shitting themselves, Tony. It's there. It's big. It may be, but you are going to need a lot more than a needle mark on a junkie's arm. I'll get it. How? Well, the Italians are sending Paolo details of an Australian link to Sabatino. Is this where the IF link comes in? Maybe. When will you know? When the parcel of documents arrives. A parcel from Italy? Look, bloody hell, Claire. We've got till Saturday, not Christmas. It'll come! In the meantime, I want to find out who killed Nicole. Why? Why? That is not the page one story. Well, that would rather depend on who killed her. If anyone killed her. What? Look. Don't let this get personal, Claire. Junkies do die of overdoses. Magistrates can be corrupt. <sighs> Look, all I'm saying is just go with what you know. And what's that? The IF money trail. Oh, I've run into a brick wall. And the money just disappears into Wirraway. So who controls Wirraway? Well, it's, it's three front companies, all with these ridiculous bird names. Kookaburra Investments, Emu Nominee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nominee. Shelf companies. What about the directors? story. They're all accountants and lawyers, presumably with confidential trust agreements between them and the real directors. The perfect and, of course, perfectly legal way to hide the actual owners. Have you spoken to these accountants and lawyers? No, not yet. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out there and talk to them. Look, the only way I'll believe that Claire Boyd has hit a brick wall is when I can see cement dust between her pearly whites. Woodland has announced the takeover. Got 19.9%, and he's Hill announced Rock, a part A offer. $8.60 a share. $8.60? Shit it in. Whilst I'm expecting that most shareholders of Samson Publishing will accept the Woodlands Corporation offer in the near future, and that Samson Publishing will be taken into the Woodlands. Old man Samson will never sell. Woodlands doesn't need him. He's had like friendly brokers warehousing for months. 
An 860 will buy him as much of the rest of the family as he needs. <laughs> so much for family loyalty. Well, that's what you get, having eight kids from three wives. Well, you'd know. And assure that shareholders and staff of Samson Publishing there will be no change of editorial policy in either paper. Mr. Woodland. Here we go. You better make this week's story a killer, sport. Yeah, Trevor, you heard? Everyone in my office in 20 minutes. Lenny, you said you were bringing a delegation, not half the bloody community. It's not half the bloody community, Al. It's half the bloody electorate. Hello, Hello. Today's mail, Mr. Shaw. The cheque's come in for the Cullen settlement, well, and there's rather an unusual package for Robbie. In the event of my death, this package is to be given to Robbie Shaw and no one else. Daryl Youngman. Event of my death? Anyone ever heard of this Daryl Youngman? No. Well, look, you better put it on young Robbie's file and keep watching the death notices again. <laughs> Is that our page? Yeah, my uh, boyfriend bought it back duty free from Bali. Oh, beautiful. You know, that is the first perfume I ever wore. Oh, yeah. A long time ago. Did you like some? Oh, thank you. Mm. Get these copied and sent off in the next hour. Uh, Mr. Lanford, I haven't quite finished Mr. Monkton's typing yet. Yeah, well, I don't want excuses, Tracy. I just want it done, all right? And uh, Claire Boyd is still waiting to see from the observer. Ron Blanford, Claire. How can I help you? Well, I was hoping you could help me with some inquiries about one of your companies, Ron. Let's go and talk in my office. Good. You know why I don't read the Observer, Claire? No, why, Ron? No sports pages. Ah. Which company were you up? Kookaburra nominees. Oh, no, I don't think I could help you there, Claire. I was just interested in who you might be acting for. Oh, is that all? Mm. And you think they pay me to tell journalists their business? It would be a breach Maybe of professional ethics, Maybe if I just explained to you what my interest was. Wouldn't make any difference. I'm sorry, Claire, I'm a busy man. I've got to go. Tracy, show Claire out. Would you please? Nice to have met you, Claire. Bye. <laughs> I can't tell you that, Claire. You used to tell me everything, Marcus. I know. But this would be a breach of professional ethics. Oh, I never thought I'd hear you talking like that. What was he used to say at the legal service? Professional ethics are the last refuge of the shonky lawyer. The legal service was a long time ago. Mm, a lot of things were. Business. Nothing to do with right or wrong. Justice. <laughs> Don't imagine that's news to the Weekly Observer. So, you won't tell me who you're acting for? Hey, aren't you going to have a drink? Ronald Blanford, solicitor, no. Angela Mazaka's accountant, no. Leonard Gray, not available, no. Marcus Nankunis, Police have still not released the names of the man and woman found dead at a remote house in the Dandenongs yesterday. A post-mortem revealed that they died of massive heroin overdoses in what seems to have been a lover's suicide pact. Police say there are no suspicious circumstances and the names will be released as soon as the dead couple's relatives have been notified. I knew straight away they was dead. I mean, you can just tell, can't you? Yes. Yes, you can. So was there a suicide note? No. And the coppers weren't acting like it was suicide either. Did the police take anything? Just some papers from her drawers and things. I never would have rented her the house if I'd known she was a drug addict. Who found them? Me and Ridge. Didn't half give us a fright either. Two dead bodies in the middle of the night. Why were you here in the middle of the night? Well, one of their friends came and woke us up. Said they needed help, urgent. Disappeared by the time we got here. What friend? 
Well, I don't know his name, but this is him here. From the way the coppers are talking, they're after him now. You walk and take my heart away. You walk and take my heart away. Chief Inspector Hannaford, head of the drug force. <sighs> Police released Nicole and Youngman's names this morning. Double suicide. No suspicious circumstances. He's a killer. And now he's after Robbie. And he's still got Angela. Yeah, that poor little girl. That's why Nicole went back into IF to save her child. Who's the father? I don't know. Is it Robbie? No. No, it was before his time. That child must be, must be five. We got to find her before Hannaford does anything else. It's all right. Well, I'll, I'll get all the IF properties checked. We might be able to find out where they're hiding her. I'll get in touch with Davis. Tell him to pull out all the stops on Robbie. Is that wise? Robbie is in danger too. I know, but... Davis said Hannaford left him in the dark a lot. He tried his best to steer you away from IF. He let me escape. Set a hare to catch a fox. No. I can't believe Davis is messed up in this. He's got children of his own. We can't take the chance, Paolo. We've got to go higher than Davies with real proof. It's the only way we're going to get them to move against IF. In the meantime, you have to get on to Francesco. Get hold of those documents straight away. We are running out of time. You can speak frankly in front of Major Weatherby. Am I to assume there's a security angle to all this? Don't assume anything, Inspector. This meeting never took place. Do you have any news? Nothing. He's disappeared. Did he ever mention getting documents from Italy? Hey, mate. Can't you bastards leave me alone? It's a social call, Bernie. 
Gee. This is very nice. You've done very well. You know, I'll tell you what, mate. Age is gonna knock the ass out the matrimonial peace of mind business. Don't you believe it, pal. Always someone wanting to know who's up who and who's paying. So what are you after, Sarge? You know a bloke called Weatherby? Major David Weatherby. Since when's the drug force been denied access to the security computer? Well, this is an informal call, Bernie. One that won't leave a trail. Well, the bloody hell should I help you? That prick Hannaford held me for 16 hours on some bullshit charge the other day. You were hanging around the Southern Cross Hotel with an illegal scanner. I was working, pal. Who for? I can't tell you that. It's confidential. You weren't tailing a bloke called Pitsy by any chance, were you? I thought you were the bloke carrying on a big surveillance operation with him. Who told you that? Hannaford. He warned me off. He reckons he'd make sure I lost my license if I messed up the operation. You lose your license for having an illegal scanner. And then all of this goes too. But, well, I might be able to intervene. Who's Weatherby working for? The last I heard, he was attached to overseas intelligence. What would they be using him for? Only bring him in for the rough stuff. What sort of rough stuff? Wet jobs. Why would overseas intelligence want to kill Paolo Pizzi? Hi. Sorry I'm late. He's waiting for us. Ages to lose my tail. The receptionist gave me a very funny look when I arrived with this. Eight o'clock in the morning at the Bay Motel. Did you tell your editor about Hannaford? Yes, he thinks we'll need more than a tape to pin the murders on him, but oh, he wants the story. He's got Sandy tracking down all the IF properties. It'll take a couple of days. In the meantime, he wants me to be careful. So do I. Ready? Yes. Did you give him the settings? Yeah, but we'll have to be quick. And Andiamo. Your call to Italy, sir. OK. Just one moment. Connecting you now. Pronto? Paolo. Francesco, siamo pronti. Attacco il modem. It's not working. Just wait. We're on. Are you saving it? Yes. Senor Weatherby. Still here. We have a trace for you. Good. Stop access. What's happened? I don't know. We've been cut off. Probably the international line. But I've saved what we did get. Let's have a closer look at it. Come on. Come on. Stand by mobiles. They really did well. All Sabatino's Panama transactions built out. Next. Payments out for raw materials. Payments in for profits. Just like legitimate business. Next. Look. Pacific Investment Bank. Pacific Investment Bank. Pacific Investment Bank. The Australian connection. Okay, we got it. Bay Motel Bar Morris. Leave him in place, but I want total surveillance. Total. They're all deposits. Doesn't make sense. Why not? If Sabatino's got an operation here in Australia, then he should be taking profits out through Panama, not depositing money into Pacific Investment. It doesn't make sense. There must be more. Well, there is more, but Francesco got cut off. You want to 
that and had a chance at the computer. You'll have to wait for documents to arrive. If only I had these bank records a month ago, I would have had Sabatino. And you'd still be in Calabria? Yes. Nicole Louise Davison, 27, Carol Rodford Youngman, 32. Please say there are no suspicious circumstances. Douglas Shorn, no circumstances. Look, I want notices for Robbie to contact us, put in all the papers as soon as possible, OK? Failing that, it's a, it's a matter for the police. There was brisk trading in Samson Publishing shares today as many small investors rushed to take advantage of the Woodlands Corporation offer. Lemming. With a number of larger holdings expected to change in a few days, a Woodlands Corporation spokesman denied that Mr Brian Woodlands appearance before the Mitchell Royal Commission into tax evasion last week could in any way affect the takeover bid. No, his mates in Canberra will make sure of that. This week's hearing, he's been called to Canberra. Ah, here she is. ...with the Attorney General. And in other financial news today... Wayne, what's an honest tradesman like you doing up an editorial? Looking after you, Mob. <laughs> Don't you know it's a den of iniquity? Tony about? Look what my husband found, proofing and legal notices. What? Would anyone knowing the whereabouts of Mr. Robert Paul Shaw please ask him to contact Mr. Douglas Shaw of Douglas Shaw and Associates, solicitors, urgent. On your bike, sister. Waiting in your office, Mr. Walters. Thank you for ringing the Inkerman Foundation. How can we help you? Can I ask who's calling? Just a moment, sir. Well? I'm back. So I see. For how long? Not for good this time. Disappointed in you, Robbie. You let me down. You let the whole team down. I know. But I needed time to think. After, you know, Mum. It won't happen again. How can I be sure? How can I be sure you won't let the team down again? with the shipment just two days away. You can be sure. This is my family. This is where I belong. Okay. So, Douglas wouldn't even talk to you? I'm not in the habit of discussing my nephew's private affairs with journalists. Bloody professional ethics. I just had two days' worth of that from the bird company directors. They know it's a scam. They know I know it's a scam, and yet they sit there so smugly quoting professional ethics to me as if they were acting to the Virgin Mary. <sighs> Lawyers. They don't lie to you. They smoke after they make love. You get used to it. <laughs> Will I? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Still no clues who those lawyers are acting for. No, not yet. But the money trail from Wiraway stops with those bird companies. They have to be the link back to Sabatino. Maybe. Why maybe? The money's going the wrong way. Sabatino's sending money into Australia. 
not thinking it out. Maybe he's doing both. Why? Maybe he's buying something in Australia. What can he get here that he can't get in Europe? Besides kangaroos. <laughs> oh, very funny. Mm, but if Francesco's documents tell us where Trans-Pacific Investment sends Sabatino's money, then we might be able to work out what it is he's buying. The documents have arrived. I'm getting them tomorrow. How? There's a function at the Wungabi Calabrese Club tomorrow night. I'm going to be just another face in the crowd. Be careful, Paolo. I don't want anything happening to you. I'm getting too old for this.
The Magistrate continues next Thursday night at 8.30. Tomorrow and Saturday, we celebrate the Australia Day weekend with a special collection of films presented by Christina Kachukas. Join us for the Aussie Picture Show beginning tomorrow night at 8.30. Coming up shortly on ABC, Power in the Pacific.